It's the comedy nine to five at the office in half an hour on choice. But first up, with some strong language, Dermot's sporting buddy, Johnny Vegas, takes him to St. Helens in the Wirral for some rugby. Hello there, my name's Dermot O'Leary, and this is a brand new show called Dermot's Sporting Buddies, which involves me, that's Dermot, taking some buddies to go and see some sport. Hence, Dermot's Sporting Buddies. So if I said to you the words funny man, monkey, pottery and booze, surely I can only be talking about one man. Okay. Ah. Geese, ah. I'm Johnny Vegas, uh, welcome to my hometown of St. Helens. So, what can I tell you about the man Vegas? Well, for one, we went to the same university, all right, Polytechnic together, that was Middlesex, where he was simply known as Michael Pennington. He studied pottery, worked as a publican. It'd be great if you're home for... And had a brief stint in the priesthood before he found his feet in the world of comedy. I'm still pushing back the boundaries. I'm experimenting. In just four short years, Vegas has taken the stand-up world by storm. He's picked up his fair share of silverware and signed a number of lucrative sponsorship deals. Probably the most significant was his work with a man known only as the Monkey. No, monkey lion! He's worked well with some of the heavyweights in the business. Solo TV and movie success surely beckons. It's time to meet a real-life local hero. Here is Johnny. Um, so yeah, I'm going to catch up with him here. Rumours already got round to the local pub uh, that you're putting a lot of money behind the bar and drinks are free. So there's going to be a cracking fight or something later. I told him something subtle. I wanted a Vespa. I wanted us to go all Italian. I was oh, loving that bus. I was going to be Blakey. <laughs> <laughs> 1947, that bus. The last is we can pull in this. Really? You oh, think? come on. <laughs> the cream of St. Helens ladies are real. Yeah, there. I found We've got that. this. You're going to take us around St. Helens in this today. Convince me to, to support the Saints tonight. Right, okay. You have to do that. There's going to be a big sale on eggs in St. Helens today. Really? <laughs> People will see this and actually go, it's gone to his head, I told you. <laughs> He's travelling around in an open top bus now. How much more does he want to be noticed? <laughs> Talking, you're going shy. No, oh, it's just me, it's my effect. Oh no, you Is know, it? you know, it's, it's not. I keep, I, I keep getting this. I keep getting these really filthy messages off some. From who? So it's being filmed now. It, it just, oh no. Private last night, I had a message off a. Go on, show. You might not remember me. I met you in Edinburgh. I was kissing your nipple on stage. I was the one with the eye patch. <laughs> I read, please don't show I read that. in an interview that you said you've real trouble with women. You've got pirate lass. Howdy ha, she's yeah but Bernadette what? from Portugal. You're not doing you're not doing yeah, that for yourself. I know. That's all what you're talking about. No, but they're just like friends that I end up in bed with. <laughs> anyway. Well that old <laughs> Saint Helen. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So when did you start going? Did your dad take you? No, my, my, my dad never um I never went to a game with dad. It was really weird though. Did you not support him? Me, yeah, he does, but it's that, it's that really odd thing of my dad took me two brothers and I was always just a few years younger, Yeah. never quite got to go and then I think at the point where I was old enough to go, he'd got laid off and it was that kind of thing of, suddenly it was a bit of a luxury yeah. thing to do. So how did you, did you just go on your own? Or? I used to go to games but I used to, I, I used to climb over and if I did ever get the money to go, we just bought six with it. Yeah, still you can over. climb over, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And who are, you, who are your heroes, Mr. Helens? We had Mel Meninga, and he, he wasn't a St. Helens lad. We brought him over from Australia, but he, he was phenomenal. He was like, for me, the first kind of superstar to run for it. the ball in. Oh, Mel Meninga! He's going for the line! It's a formality! It's a... You do some work for them now, don't you? On the... Yeah. What do you do? I, well, I, initially I went and trained with them, we did a thing for the, the Challenge Cup final I did two days training with them and it was... I couldn't move, I couldn't move for <laughs> two days afterwards <laughs> <laughs> I could hear the coach going, knock him off his f***ing feet <laughs> 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 
Right, Johnny, I've learned about the game, uh, but for me to support... Very little, yeah. you know what I mean? I go, yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> I've learned a little bit about it, more than you, but for me to support St Helens tonight, I've got to learn about your town, your people. I want to feel them, I want to meet them. You will do, Let's in go. abundance. But while we're there, on the way to the bus, you show me some skills. Oh, yeah. down to Twickenham this year for a final and uh, of course she plays on a big day out and me uh, sat me dad and there was two empty seats and the camera cut to us and you know the thing where you're going it'd be a lovely thing to show the grandkids one day that's me and your, you know me and your granddad at a final and they showed me in an empty seat got <laughs> <laughs> me dad out right and you know that one moment where you have that look on your face of did I leave the gas on <laughs> <laughs> and you're like I think, I think my dad was a bit gutted you know in that kind of you can't did really show it. Did your daddy the whole? Your, your granddad was sat just about <laughs> there, you know, like off screen. Who am I? Um, Give me like a big Wigan player who you hate. You'd be Gary Connolly. I don't hate him, he's a St. Helens lad. But... I'm not doing it there, that's dog shit. All right, I'm Gary Connolly, who are you? I'm Sean Long. Ready? Yeah. Go. <laughs> like that? Yeah. Look at the run up you're taking. All right then. No, that's all right. I'm not Go very on. good from the standing start. I'm like an oil rig. Don't ruin the dash. <laughs> <laughs> Once more. You're gonna damn me now, are you? I'm annoyed about that. <laughs> the slowest sidestep in the world. <laughs> the gangs are coming off and everything. There's only, there's only one reason I was over second there. That's the fact that you, you, you have ten packets of cigarettes unopened. There you are. You know what? Let's go see your town. Okay. Oh no, stirred. That's my house. Where? That one. It's been done up. It looks like the amateur bill. That one there? Yeah. Is that where your mum and dad live? No, that's mine that I bought. You bought that yourself? Yeah. How big is it? It's a beauty. Six bedrooms. Six bedrooms? What, 100 grand in comparison to London? Six bedrooms, 100 grand. I've had it two years and the only thing I've managed to put in is a new window. <laughs> the family that had it before me did all this DIY but it wasn't very good at DIY. Right. For some reason they put a serving hatch on one of the bedroom walls. I might let some rooms out. Yeah. You know, get some students and try and hang on to my youth. Yeah. And I thought, how could you in show in someone that In a kind of rigs way. Yeah, yeah, you know the kind of just wondering if you want to <laughs> You go in that room and they're going, what's then? You're going, that's just the hatch where I like to watch you when you're sleeping. That, um, our kids used to tell me with Big Ben. Oh. And I believed him. Oh. <laughs> well, they just that's what I used to fish. Spent years fishing there. That's, that's where he's down. That's one with the, there's a giant pike in there, down the pike. Still alive, you reckon? That's told. I hope so. I like to think so. I was always cacking myself for catching it. Is that um, where you make your first communion? That, that's the Catholic you? Church, but that's that used to be a great master's go to. Because the priest, I've never seen anyone say a mass as quick in your life. Yeah. Irish priest. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Right, jobs are good and let's get to the pub. <laughs> yeah. There used to be a priest uh, years ago, um, after the war, who actually kept a crocodile. In and it? And it, yeah, and it kind of, um, it, it, it guarded the old lady statue. It's like the, uh, the papal uh, version of Miami Vice. <laughs> Gimlet's pies. Now that's the, oh that one's boarded up. <laughs> that's a massive thing in the town. Can we go to one? Well there's one around corner, yeah, you've got to have a Gimlet's pie. We'll go to one in a minute. That's the Theatre Royal. The Theatre Royal got taken over by Jesuits years ago and banned alcohol. Basically, that was the night that everybody stopped going to the theatre in St. Helens. <laughs> that last was about two days. No hell! <laughs> I can't appreciate culture sober. Where did you get school, Johnny? Did you decide to be a priest? I did, um, for a few years, yeah. I know, it's, it's one of them, I wasn't forced into it, it was actually my 
right, decision. But, but I bet your parents are over the moon. Oh, you, the whole when punish was, yeah. we're going to have our very own little father. What happened husband. when you just changed your mind and you came back? It just wasn't what my idea to be the priest was. It was very like, it was all about grades. You, you know, and you kind of go, and I thought it was about caring about people and stuff like that. Mm. And that, to be honest, combined with going through, you know, changes. Yeah. You enter puberty and you're going, celibacy. Man. Never. <laughs> not even on your birthday or, really, you know, really sunny days. And it's like, no, and you just go, I'm not going to be able to keep this up. You did your first gig around here, yeah? I did. Behind so what happened the, there? I mean, how did you even get into your first gig? Because you were a heckler, I, I right? went, Yeah, I went watching and I heckled. And I got up at the end, drunk, and did this big rant about Potter. I was a very embittered person. Yeah. Um, and they liked it and they kind of said, you know, do you want to come back and, and compare the next one? And they actually, for my first gig, put us on free ale. And then the next gig, they were like, we'll pay for expenses instead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand the etiquette of stand-up. And my first ever review from the Citadel was, he's the only compere I've seen who heckles the headline act throughout his set. <laughs> so I was bringing them on, joining the audience, and then going, Boo! <laughs> hey! You're rubbish! <laughs> This is the town centre now, right? <laughs> Do you know yeah. these girls? Everyone knows, everyone is set. And it's, there's big fights between these and Pimlets. Is there? Greg's do the best cheese and smoke town. <laughs> Pimmy's do the best pies, you do the best apple yeah, turnovers. Steak bait. Steak bait. Alright, but I'm still having the Pimmies. <laughs> I've, I've room for both. Just right, try right it. How hot is it? Are we allowed to eat inside? <laughs> Wow! All right. All right. Wow, says the manageress. Jeez, this is lovely. Johnny, it's a Joanne. She made it. Joanne, did you do the eyes on that one? No, I didn't. That's absolutely beautiful. I can't believe he's going to take me to Pimlets. Now then, we've been over in Greg's and the names they've been calling you as oh. well. So I told him he couldn't come to St. Helens without having a Pimmy's pie. <laughs> this is no disrespect to Greg's, but this is a bit more up my opinion. Yeah, I know, that's, that's, that's what I mean. That's your, that's your kind of McDonald's. This, is, this is your restaurant. Yeah. Yes, well, two meat and potato pies, pies, please. Two meat and Yeah. Please. Oh, they're lovely. What meat's that? Corn beef. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, and I'm not, you know, just saying this because you're here, that was beautiful. If you're ever in trouble and you're like a saying something's accent, just sell Pimlets. Pimlets. And people on the street. Right. Well, I love you people. I want to buy your whole town a drink, so we're going to get as many people on that bus as we possibly can. It's really good. Oh. Come on, Rick. Come on, come on. Oh, get them on. Get them on. Come here to me. <laughs> It's the same tenement barn and bread. I love him, I love him to pieces. Oh, you're right. Hi. Do you know the brown edge? That's brilliant, isn't it? This is your first ever job, right? Yeah, yeah. Is Johnny only good when he works here or is he a bit bad? Oh, he's lovely, weren't you? <laughs> no, that's, his, his loveliness isn't in doubt, Val. He's, was he confident? Was he good at his job? No. <laughs> is he a good player? Oh yeah, is he? Yeah. I mean, well, he's got, he's got the, the shape, hasn't he? Really? Or the barrel-like physique? I've got the build and the killer instincts. <laughs> oh, Hello, oh, darling. Oh, Hello, darling. Hello, How are you doing? <laughs> Would you like to come for a drink? I only have tea. That's all right, we'll do your tea. Hi, That's good, people. <laughs> Lots of lovely ladies. How are you? You're right. Anyone caught in? Hey, don't get on. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, I want to be in that number. Yeah. 
opportunity, you were Johnny's boss when he was here. I was. Now, what kind of barman was he? Um, it was very good, but he was the scruffiest fellow we've ever seen. Yeah, but keen. Were you here when Johnny was a barman? Oh, we all were here. Everybody was here. Was he any good? Crap. Very good. Who hasn't ordered yet? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? Coke. Oh, look, I'm just going to get behind the bar. When you've got these ready. All right. And what kind of boss was Jesus? Oh, demanding, overbearing, always wanting to get work late, you know, always kind of... Oh, but that was for his body after. I know, it was, <laughs> it's that kind of, you can't, you can't clean the lines properly when someone's walking around in lingerie. <laughs> <laughs> it's very distracting. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, mate. In the brown edge, very nice, I have to say. So you used to work behind here, right? I did. I worked, I worked behind here for about five or six years. Off and years? Up. Yeah, I worked here before I went to college. And then I worked here when I used to come home on holidays. Mm -hmm. But it was... But, it yeah, was I mean, you know, you, you said the heckling stuff is how you started. But in all seriousness, when did you start thinking to yourself, I can make a career out of this? Um, I think once I'd finished college, I, and I was really miffed, about what had happened with grades and everything. You don't think I've wasted four years. And it was that thing of like, I can't do a nine to five. You know what I mean? It's just not, not in my nature. And then I just, you know, it was just suddenly something that I thought, it was an odd bit of a, a pipe tree. And then doing it once or twice going, you know, it didn't go that bad. Let's have a go with Johnny. Let's drive Johnny to drink. Have you ever been on stage without drink? I'd, I'd honestly drink. It's not. I think I could get used to going on without it, but I think it does creatively. It frees me up. You know, there's big blokes that they've had slanging matches with, and if I hadn't had half a bottle of vodka, there's no way I'd. I'd be like, you're right, mate. I'm crap. <laughs> I'm off. Yeah. I, it's some of that. I, I was aware of it when I couldn't control it, and I was aware of it when it really was destroying me. And you just could feel that same. So I got to the point where I was like. I think I had a breakdown in Edinburgh, I was kind of going, I just want gravy. Because I was thinking, it's got all the goodness of food, but it's a drink. <laughs> and I couldn't get in, I was sat in this cafe with the uh, fish cakes and chips, nearly crying, going, it's not gravy. <laughs> and this is when you're kind of going, you've got to snap out of this. You're only eating half a waffle a day. Yeah. And you're going, I'm full. Yeah. It's just like that. Is that why you, you don't really, well, do you want to do stand-up anymore, or do you prefer doing stand I, I know, I love doing, like, I love my stand-up, but it does take a lot out of me. And I think if I was just doing stand-up, without like being over dramatic, like I, I, I got to the point where I was like, I'm not going to see forty if I carry on with this. Like, Seriously, you thought? Yeah, yeah. I'm breaking out into new areas. This is a big test for me. Just keep fucking smiling. So what about comic heroes? Did anyone make a big enough impression on you when you were little to actually want to be a comedian? Or um, yeah, there was. <clears throat> I was a big fan of Tom O'Connor. Were you? Yeah, which I know, it's like, you get a lot of stick about, but he's... Before he started doing, like, uh, Name That Tune and everything, he was... He did brilliant storytelling stuff. Now, here's the problem. November is the danger point for fellas, because wives start saying, uh, this year, don't get me anything. <laughs> <laughs> Spend it on the kids, you know. Oh, that too, no, don't. Have you ever tried giving your wife nothing for Christmas? <laughs> well, what do you want to do next? Um, I want to act. I want to do more acting. I love it. I, I, I can't... And it just sounds like it's not the thing to turn me back on stand-up, but it's, it's brilliant. I, 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 the lifestyle, it's fascinating. It's, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Pub. Lovely. All right. How'd you get that gig? I mean, did... Did, they wrote did you have in mind. Or? Yeah, I auditioned twice for it. They would have been gutting not to get a part that was written for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're just not very good at being you. What do you want? I'll have a monkey killer. What's that? It's three quarters of a pint of Guinness topped up with cider and a glass of Grand Marnier in a glass, in the pint glass. I'll pay for the Guinness. You can pay for the rest. Did you go up for Harry Potter? No, I went up for Lord of the Rings. Did you? And I got a final callback with Peter Jackson um, for, for Sam Ganja. Well, that, that oh. And that, that was the first thing in years 
that was actually really, really gutting about. I got maudlin drunk, visited the website, and started sending all these <laughs> letters going, it should have been me. <laughs> that was my destiny. I mean, how did that even come about? Did they get in touch or...? Just, uh, cast in, she got in touch. Went down, didn't expect to go anywhere. Did my first reading and they were like, this is good, this is... And then the second one, it was that kind of, we shouldn't say it, we don't want to build your hopes up, but I reckon we found our Sam Ganja. You know, and you're going... Three this films. Is, this is, I know. Three films, massive work. You know, and you're going... It's my ambition playing someone short, fat and early who lives in holes. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the ladies? I noticed earlier on there's several text messages in your phone. It's lovely and I won't deny it. And it's that kind of thing of, from years of being blanked in clubs, it's, it's like an odd thing of going, yeah, but they're only talking to you because of this, you know, because you do comedy or because you're on telly. Mm -hmm. And you're going, yeah, but on, the, on that kind of thinking, they're only talking to you because you're good looking. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I was always like really fair. I had a lot of girls who were friends. So I've always been part oh, of those, girls. Eh? Is, yeah, I know. So it was self inflicted. I didn't want the friendship. <laughs> I wanted to be friends with the bras off, but it never quite. <laughs> Let's be topless friends. Come <laughs> on. Well, I think it's about nearly time for the match, so uh, we better get get All right. skates on. Drink up. Don't go changing. See you, Johnny lad. Have you already walked to the ground? Yeah, yeah. It's one of them, and I'm not a big walker. But How about that? It's bad, oh yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the way it just burns up the calorie. Do you know walking is as much exercise as running? So yeah. I, I feel like I'm being coaxed into running. <laughs> I'm not going to have it. But, um. <laughs> Now, was that a horn of support or a near miss? Oh. you got to be excited about this, right? Oh, it's fucking... Yeah, I just... Hey! <laughs> One young man so happy, he's stolen a chair! <laughs> this is rugby league! So that was carnage, and it still is carnage. Um, we're just about to go inside. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, as with every sporting montage, uh, we always put it to music. We give you the choice. We've got two things here. Uh, we've got your second favourite son of St Helens, Rick Astley. Uh, whenever you need somebody, the album. Or we have the Johnny Vegas Orchestra, as seen on TV, Ron Taylor Records presents. Oh, which was you like? That? We, we got that. I think that's Canadian, I believe, isn't it? Yes. Okay. What would you like? Um, I want Johnny Vegas, and I want, um, I get a kick out of you. I get a kick out of you. Let's get a kick out of St. Helens. All right, Finally. mate. My story's much too sad to be told, but practically everything leaves me told. It must be nice that's to be back lovely. though, in the old stadium. And it is an old stadium. Yeah, it is. And then I suddenly turn. I get no kick from champagne. Oh. Lovely Bolton leash 
Saints Club, you've got us on the telly, and God knows what. That's for you. Um, life membership. I'm only life member of this. Go on, show it up, then they can all see it. Um, I, it's it's the other thing. I, I won a comedy award, and it was this. That's me, better it's more than comedy than award. This is uh, it's an Oscar, a Perrier, <laughs> um, a BAFTA, everything rolled into one, and I'm, I'm genuinely chuffed. Right, you're welcome, John. Cheers, man. You've done a lot for putting this gap. You, you never felt mention this club when you get up, Sally, and it's you appreciated. Never stopped. Oh, I, know. I know we never bloody stopped, <laughs> Sally does. Anyway. Thanks right. a lot, lads. Okay, right. Cheers, thanks See for that. Then, right. Wow. Did you expect that? No, not at all. It just came up then. It was like... Because it, 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 it looks like one of them stage things, and it's not. Thank you very much for bringing me, by the way. Listen, I'm, I'm really glad. Did really you enjoy it? Yeah, a fantastic time. I love your town. I love your team. Uh, I love the fact you've just been awarded that. What's your highlight of the day, surely? Um, this this is overwhelming. This, it's like if I can combine them, this and the chanting and the reception we got from the bus. Mine, if I may add, is uh, your awesome takedown of myself and us just playing around like grown men uh, in the park earlier on. Ready? Yeah. Go. <laughs> I really enjoyed myself. I'm, I'm glad you did, mate, and, uh, and you've made a lot of people's days. It'll be, uh, yeah, right, be chatting about this. Lot. Things come. See if we can get into it's that place. It's John Biggs, and it's damn it! Coming up next on Choice, it's The Office, right after 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 